Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries. We are confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God.
friends in Christ, let us now listen attentively to the word of God, recalling how he saved his people throughout history, and in the fullness of time, sent his own son to be our redeemer. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh draw, drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, what, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given to us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and shine as a light in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they may go and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that stone which was very large and had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. The terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel has some very interesting details, and these interesting details are ones we don't always notice. One of the things we encounter 
from the experience of the women of the tomb is that they are afraid. Now, we've got to unpack that a bit. They're afraid, not of Jesus, but because something has happened which is totally unexpected. Something that's good, perhaps the greatest event in all time, but an event nonetheless that they were not expecting. For them, Jesus' time had come to an end. They were there simply to do the wrapping up. They were there simply to look after the body. Their purpose was not to encounter a messenger who would tell them of the risen Christ. Their purpose was not to discover that death had not triumphed over Jesus. So often in life, when we look at people, we write them off. We write them off because we think if they're never going to do something, um, they never will. And it's kind of interesting because sometimes we just assume that people are not capable of doing the things that perhaps catch us off guard when we discover they actually do. So often what happens is a person shows potential, we wait for them to do something great, and then when it doesn't happen, we move on to the next person. I think a lot of actors in Hollywood, men and women who have waited and waited and waited to get that right role, they don't get it early on in their careers. They have to wait. And eventually, that time comes. And suddenly, they are the big celebrity sensation. So often, we expect that success comes early. We don't realize that sometimes the road to success is a lot of work. If we look at Christ's ministry, Christ's ministry was one which just a week before seemed apparently successful. When we look at Palm Sunday, Jesus comes into Jerusalem. The people are cheering. It seems that things are going well. Within a few days, it crashes. And on Easter Sunday, something marvelous happens. Christ lives. And yet, there's something else which is very interesting. It's not a sight which is witnessed by hordes and hordes of people. Rather, it's something that nobody is there for. Think about that. Christ had been abandoned, totally abandoned. The people who came to his crucifixion were there for him at the end, but they assumed it was over. Nobody had any idea of what they were to discover. This is one of the things I think is important for us as we continue on our journey battling the pandemic. So often I think there's a temptation to think that the best years are behind us. I, I hear from so many people talking about how life will be never as wonderful again as it was. And I think that attitude is defeatist. I think we have to be very careful about deciding that the best years were always the ones behind and not the ones to come. If we have that attitude, we fall into the same trap that the disciples had with Jesus' crucifixion. We fall into that same trap that, well, the best there is was and never will be again. The resurrection shows us that there still can be hope in the future. It shows us there still can be opportunities going forward. When I came to church today, I was looking at the sun going down and I was thinking to myself, there's so many wonderful, and I, I, I do mean this with all sincerity, there's so many wonderful feast days of the church year. And yet Easter Vigil, I think, is still one of the most undiscovered ones. We all get Christmas Eve, we all get Easter morning. Most of us now realize Pentecost is a big deal, but there is something wonderful about gathering to meet the moment of Jesus' resurrection. There's something wonderful about coming together to do this. And I think it's interesting how it is, in theory, the biggest night of the churches here, and yet it's one that's not really that well attended, and for a variety of reasons. The church regularly didn't do the vigil for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, it's something which got forgotten, sort of put on the back burner, so to speak. But here's where it's interesting. Sometimes the things that get forgotten Sometimes the things that get put in the, on the back burner, sometimes the things we put in the storage, 
are things that we will need to gain, and they'll be very important to us. I think when we look at Jesus' crucifixion, we see a life which had changed all of his disciples, absolutely. But we see for them a temptation to say that the end had come. It really is tragic, but it really is what they were going through. And we can't be too harsh on them. They didn't honestly understand until the resurrection what was going to happen. They didn't have a clue. They just didn't get it. And quite often, we are like the disciples. We don't get it. We are subject to the same fears they were. We are subject to the same hopes, the same desires. The Easter story is timeless because it speaks to everyone, yesterday, today, and forever. The people of the first century needed hope. The Easter story gave them hope. The people today in the 21st century need hope. Today, the Easter story is still a source of hope. And in the future, we will still need hope. It's a perennial requirement we have, a perennial need that we must have satisfied. Tonight, we gather in the twilight, and we gather to greet the risen Lord. It's a powerful night. Needless to say, it's not really how we would do Easter Vigil normally at St. Luke's. But we're doing the best we can with what we're able to do. And I give great thanks for that. Let me be the first to greet you this year with the words, Happy Easter. We continue on page 330, the renewal of the baptismal vows. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship in him in faith. We pray that all who have passed through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that our Lenten observance is ended, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? 
I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. God, the Creator, the rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep us faithful to our calling now and forever. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may abide to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. may be perfected in your salvation in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer is Eucharistic prayer number six. 
found on page 207. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Spirit, Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Father, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Andrew, our bishop, Kevin, our area bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Luke and all the saints, who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Breaking of the Bread, number 8, page 213. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we were raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Giver of all, we are nourished with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may be witnesses to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for a man. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.